I was away traveling in September and I had a blast. I'm not going to bore you with the details of it, but I did want to talk about one of the things I've struggled with since coming back. While I would say I'm pretty balanced with my diet, including a good helping of treats, I was probably a bit more relaxed than usual on holiday. After all, it would have been remiss of me not to eat Belgian waffles and chocolate in Belgium and Kaiserschmarrn in Austria. Since coming home, I found myself craving those sorts of foods more often than before. I found it a challenge to get back into my regular pattern and turn my brain off from holiday mode. So I thought I'd share with you what I found useful in case any of you are in a similar position. It doesn't need to be after a holiday either. If you're struggling with your daily diet regardless of vacation, this podcast is for you. Hey, and welcome to Vegetarian Health and Longevity, a podcast by Hurry the Food Up, where I cover topics that help vegetarians live longer in better health. I'm your host, James LeBaig. I'm a registered sport and exercise nutritionist and advanced clinical practitioner in family medicine. It's my pleasure to interview expert guests, share my own experiences from working with patients and clients, and demystify some of the nutrition fluff that's out there to give you practical, take-home information that you can use to live a healthier life. Apologies, by the way. I'm a bit snuffly at the moment with a cold. I'll try my best not to sound too nasally and irritating in this episode. It can be difficult to get your diet back in order after going on holiday, and unchecked, it can lead you down a path which you don't want to go down. These are simple tips I use for myself and I use with my one-on-one clients to get things back in place. You might use one of them, or you might use all of them. If you do find it useful, I'd love it if you gave the podcast a quick review on whatever platform you're listening on. It'll only take a moment, but means a ton, so thanks in advance. For me, getting back to a balanced diet starts with a plan. Instead of leaving meals to chance, I find it helpful to think ahead about what I'm going to eat. I usually take a bit of time on Sunday to map out my week and create a shopping list. Even if I don't stick to it exactly, just having a guide helps me drifting into a spontaneous and often less healthy meal choices during the week. I book my slot with Sainsbury's and wait for the usually jolly delivery person to bring my food the next day. When my meals are roughly mapped out, it takes the guesswork out of the day-to-day. That way, I don't fall back on the sort of rich, sugary foods I indulged in on holiday. Even having a rough plan can help me stay on track and reduce the likelihood of making impulsive choices based on leftover holiday cravings. Plus, with a plan, I don't need to think about it too much. I can focus on other things and know that my meals are sorted. I probably bore people to death with this, but eating the right sorts of foods can be so useful for keeping a diet on track. Protein and fibre both have satiating properties, which signal fullness and satisfaction to your body. Including plenty of protein and fibre in my meals helps keep me full and satisfied, which really helps curb cravings for sugary or rich foods. I don't eat meat, so I choose a combination of protein-rich plant-based foods such as soy, tofu, low-fat dairy, beans, legumes, and whole grain carbohydrates. These foods are not only high in protein, but are also nutrient-dense, making them a great choice for lasting energy. I often batch cook dishes like lentil curries or chickpea stews on a Sunday, so I always have some high-protein options available when I need them. Then I choose fiber-rich foods, such as whole grains, more carbs, fruits and veggies, which also keep me feeling fuller for longer and they make it easier to stick with a balanced eating plan. Fibre-rich foods add bulk to meals, which naturally slows down digestion and keeps you feeling satisfied for longer. Including a variety of fibre-rich foods in my daily meals makes it less tempting to reach for those sugary snacks. Going cold turkey on treats just isn't sustainable for me, and nor would I recommend it if I were advising myself. I say the same to the clients I work with. Keeping small indulgences in a diet helps prevent feelings of deprivation and makes it easier to stay consistent. Denying yourself treats completely can often lead to binging later on when those cravings catch up with you. I'll typically allow myself a couple of small treats each week, which is particularly important when transitioning back out of holiday mode. I know if I've got a chocolate bar or a little pastry to enjoy later, I'm less likely to feel deprived. So keeping treats in my routine makes getting back into a healthy eating pattern feel a lot more smoother and more enjoyable. And let's face it, life's too short not to enjoy a bit of chocolate now and then. This is one of the key aspects of the vegetarian protein fix. We help people lose weight sustainably. We don't ban foods from your diet and you can lose weight eating food that you enjoy. If that sounds like something you'd like to try, then you can check out a free week's meal plan 
at hurrythefoodup.com forward slash try. That's T-R-Y. You'll get a whole week of tasty but easy to prepare vegetarian recipes with step-by-step instructions and a grocery list to make it all as simple as possible. So that's hurrythefoodup.com forward slash try and you can get started today with losing weight while still eating food that you enjoy. Staying hydrated helps me manage cravings because sometimes I think I'm hungry when really all I need is a drink. A lot of people are surprised by how often thirst can masquerade as hunger. I have a big bottle of water next to me when I work and I almost always take one with me when I'm out and about. I make a point of finishing the bottle by lunchtime and then refilling it. This helps me stay on top of my hydration without feeling overwhelmed by how much I need to drink throughout the day. Usually it's just water, but I love sparkling water with juice too. (laughs) So wild, I know. Staying properly hydrated also supports digestion, energy levels and mood all of which help me get back on track after a holiday. Plus, when you're well hydrated, your body is generally better at processing food and nutrients, which can make a big difference in how you feel overall. Exercise isn't about burning off those extra holiday calories. It helps me re-establish a sense of routine, and I get a buzz from it. I also find that getting back into exercise can really help shift my mindset back into a healthy groove. I start with what feels manageable, a short jog, a bike ride, or even a home workout. Or if I'm feeling motivated, an interval session where I just have fun. So if you've ever heard of fartlek, think of that. I try not to put too much pressure on myself to hit specific times or distances. I focus more on just moving and enjoying it. I remind myself that consistency is key. So I focus on gradually building up volume and intensity again and take the pressure away from performance. Getting into a rhythm of regular movement helps me feel more aligned with my goals and reinforces a positive mindset. When I feel like I need a bit more structure, I'll track my calorie intake for a week or two. It helps me stay within a healthy range and recalibrate my portions. I'm not looking to particularly restrict myself, but sometimes knowing what I'm eating helps bring awareness back to my habits. I don't track forever, but setting a daily limit based on my goals can be really useful when I'm looking to bring some awareness back to my usual intake. Tracking calories isn't about perfection. It's about creating a bit of accountability to myself and checking in with how much I'm consuming. It also just gives that external objective guide to say, nah, that's enough. Within a week or two, I'm back where I need to be. Once I feel like I'm in the right groove again, I can stop tracking and feel confident that my habits are back where they need to be. It's not always easy, but having a rough guide to where you want to be with your diet can make a big difference. Take it slowly, be kind to yourself, and don't expect too much too quickly. Healthy habits are a marathon, not a sprint. So give yourself the time and space to get back on track naturally. So I hope you found this episode interesting and it gave you a helpful insight into how to get your diet back on track after the holidays. If you did find it useful, please do give it a quick review on whatever platform you're listening on. It helps the podcast to spread to more like-minded people like you and it'll only take a moment. So thanks so much and we'll speak soon.